best burn CFT, first of all, this is really all the stuff you need to know for best burn. These are only the, shape, the only shapes we learn. There's more than this, but these are the only ones you learn. So, uh, you may know linear, square, planar, tetrahedral, octahedral, how to draw them. And uh, basically, if you see two ligands, it's got to be linear. If you see six ligands or six points of attachment, it's octahedral. And if you see four points of attachment, it's either tetrahedral or square plane. OK, so that's the Vesper. I didn't have that overhead in class, but I found it uh, recently, so I wanted to show you. Now, the other thing you need to know, you want to be able to draw the d orbitals out. Know your d orbitals, so let me review that really quickly. Okay, there's three that are the same, the dxy on the xy axis. There's the dxz on the xz axis, and then there's going to be the dyz on the y and the z axis. So when the the subscripts tell you the axis, and all these are clover leaves that are in between the axes. So make sure you can draw them somewhat, not too ugly, but you know what I mean. Doable, okay? All right, try to make it look like, not like a kindergartner drew it. Then you have the dz squared and the dx squared minus y squared. The ones with squares are the ones on the axis. So the dz squared, that's on the z-axis. It's, it's only one that does not look like a clover leaf. It's a, uh, looks like a p orbital with a donut or hula hoop around it. And the dx squared minus y squared is on the xy axis. And that's the clover leaf that is, literally lies on the xy axis. Those are the four d orbitals. Know the names and where, how to draw them. Yes? Uh, it doesn't really matter if you do D, Z, Y, and it doesn't really matter if you put the Y axis here or the Z there, okay. but most commonly you put the letter that comes first in the alphabet first, and that one on the horizontal axis, okay. usually. Okay. All right. Now, how that works uh, with CFT, there are four diagrams I want you to know. And that's of all these structures here, all these. So we'll do some of them when we do a couple examples, but know all those. Let me give you a couple types of problems that can come with CFT. One is just a basic draw it out. And uh, let me see what it looks like. Now there's side questions that come with that. Tell me if it's para or diamagnetic. Uh, color is not related to this. So you, CFT and color problems can be in the same question, but they're not necessarily related to each other. Um, and uh, so be able to draw those. The other type of question that could come is I give you something with four ligands and I ask you the shape. So it's the reverse. It's one of these two. So you draw it out and I'll have to give you, give you additional information, which will most likely be the magnetism. And I'll tell you, it's either para or diamagnetic. When you draw them out, it should be obvious. Whatever, if I say it's paramagnetic, then that's the correct drawing. Uh, there was one time I didn't even tell you the number of ligands on one really old test I did. And so you had to draw all four of them out. And I said it was diamagnetic, and only one of the four was diamagnetic. Okay? So I didn't even tell you the number of ligands, but I told you the number of electrons. So you can have it go both ways, where you don't know the shape or you do know the shape. If you don't know the shape, that's the worst you're drawing the most pictures. Okay, now let's try a little sample here. Yeah. A sample would be, let's say, we give you the molecule. Uh, so we would give you like manganese uh, OH4. And uh, I 
uh, wants you to draw it out, tell me the magnetism, everything. Well, first of all, the manganese has what charge? If OH is minus 4, this has to be 4 plus. And so I finally have a periodic table. Manganese is right here. It's in the 1, 2, start counting from the main group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 total electrons that are interesting to us. If it's 4, 4 plus, 7 minus 4, that's uh, what I would I label as a D3. Basically, three electrons that we're going to put in the D orbitals of the CFT. Okay. Now, uh, in this case, I didn't tell you the shape. So let's just try two possible shapes. Let's try tetrahedral and let's try square planar. Okay? So, um, tetrahedral, what you do is you go, here's the energy, uh, two on, oh, I think I drew it backwards. Let me think, tetrahedral's off axis. No, this is good. I love it. dz squared, dx squared minus y squared, those are on axis, so they're the lowest energy. Then you got the dxy, the dyz, and the dxz. So on your exam, label everything. Label, put this here, <coughs> label delta, do everything. All right, is delta large or small? Well, how do you know that? You go to the, here, you say, oh, hydroxide's down here, it's below water, or it, from water and on, uh, we consider it a weak field ligand, so delta is small. So uh, I'll just write up here, delta is small because we have the hydroxide ligand. So now, uh, that's tetrahedral. Let's uh, also draw out the uh, square, oh, oh, I already labeled this right here. That's fantastic. Energy, the square planar, that's the one that's on the xy axis. So we got the dx squared minus y squared. We've got the D, uh, D X, Y. We've got the D, Z squared. And I don't really care the order of these two right here. For me, no preference. And then on the bottom, though, you have to have the D, X, Z and the D, Y, Z. <coughs> now, we've got three electrons. I know that because I calculated it. Three electrons. One, two. Where's the third one going to go? <coughs> yeah, up high because delta is small. Here, one, two, and three. Oh, by the way, I didn't label delta over here. Label delta. Para or diamagnetic? Yeah, this is paramagnetic. Uh, and that's it. If I don't give you more information, you wouldn't know what the shape is. So I just drew both so we got more practice. That's it. Okay? Uh, otherwise, they're both paramagnetic. They're both, uh, and we can't distinguish. Any questions on this one? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Yes? Great question. Why did I not draw octahedral or linear? Because I know the coordination number is four because there's four ligands. So because there's four ligands, then uh, I'm only choosing between these two diagrams. If it was a two, I'd draw linear. If there were six, I shouldn't really say ligands. I should say points of attachment. Because what if I do this? What's the coordination number? Yeah. Why is that? It's bidentate. OX is bidentate, so it has each has two points of attachment. So there's two of them, each being bidentate. There's four attachments. This has a coordination number of four. So this also would be tetrahedral or square planar. Question? Yeah. Where are you? Yes. What do you do with the counter ion? Are we supposed to draw that as well? 
The counter ion is not involved in the CFT, so it does not count as a ligand.